It's been reported today that Qantas has been sent, uh, secretly sending uh, its management personnel to the United States to receive training in preparation for anticipated strike action. Apparently, the airline has been preparing its managers in ground handling and check-in operations so that they can take over those roles in the event of industrial action by ground staff, including, uh, including baggage handlers and ramp handlers. The uh, Secretary of the Transport Workers Union, Tony Sheldon, good morning. Good morning, Leon. How are you today? Uh, well, good, but uh, very, uh, very upset with course the announcement from Qantas. Well, first of all, is there a likelihood of strike action being taken by your members? Well, it appears that uh, Qantas is determined to uh, have a confrontation with uh, training up uh, managers uh, over in LA. Um, it's a terrible combination of what uh, they're doing. It's uh, something that's unfortunately Qantas has got uh, getting more and more of a reputation of uh, pulling on. Okay. Is there likely to be strike action? Well, what's, uh, what's happened, uh, Leon, is that uh, Alan Joyce has said that he's going to outsource uh, more and more jobs. Uh, he's used the term flexibility mm -hmm. um, to uh, decrease wages, conditions and training um, for the workforce. But it also means a, a less competent service for Qantas passengers and that's something that the workforce in all the surveying we've done of our, our members uh, are determined uh, not to have happen. They want a decent, flexible arrangement that uh, provides Australian families with um, some fair job security arrangements. This is um, something that uh, is not just confined to your members. There's also talk of more and more offshore-based pilots, isn't there? Uh, there is, and, and there's a recent uh, Senate uh, inquiry uh, where the, um, the Qantas has uh, now owned up that they've got a book entry company from New Zealand that uh, they charge cost plus 12%. Um, wages and conditions for pilots that are uh, less than the poverty line in, in New Zealand under bogus accounts. It's a, it's a shocking state of affairs when they're driving the airline down and at the same time trying to trade on what is a fantastic um, aviation company with some wonderful employees. Obviously Qantas has an unmatched reputation and much of that reputation rests on the competency and the passion of the people who work for the company, doesn't it? Well, it, it does, Leon. And I know, you know, Alan Joyce um, just this uh, week sent out to all the employees um, saying that, thanking them for what has been a fantastic result um, in Qantas returns and an expected um, substantial in, um, improvement on this time last year um, for its returns again. And you know, then on the, on the other breath say, we need more flexibilities. Mm. We're going to outsource your jobs to overseas if you're pilots. We're going to decrease your wages if you're been here for decades. It just help, can't help but think that the 58% bonus that those nine top executives paid them last year, um, that uh, they're aiming for a heck of a lot more this year at the expense of Australian working families. Okay. The airline business, particularly for an international carrier like Qantas, is legitimately an international business. Uh, it's one thing to seek to defend pay and conditions for Australian-based workers, but competing in the international marketplace, how can any company, even a big company like Qantas, actually survive long term uh, if they're competing against lower paying conditions in other parts of the world? Oh, you know, this is an extremely important point. Well, and I'm, I'm uh, certainly of uh, the view, and there's a growing view across um, airline uh, employees across the world, that there needs to be a standards right across the world. But I do note that um, there are airlines that Qantas directly competes with in both business and uh, international um, first-class flights, which pay their pilots less, but actually charge substantially more for um, the seats um, that they, um, you know, when they're putting backsides on seats and for passengers. But what it really points out, and that is that people do, um, the airline is profitable. They're not suggesting they're not profitable on their international leg. It's a question of greed, bonuses versus decent working conditions for Australian jobs. And somewhere there has to be an equilibrium on that. And the equilibrium isn't um, Alan Joyce's idea of uh, driving, driving standards down less training, uh, less performance for um, which affects passengers' uh, quality, uh, let alone Australian uh, working families. Okay. Are you going to go on strike? Well, that'll be a decision by our workforce, but it appears that Qantas is determined by training up strike breakers that they want to preempt 
um, um, the desire to have a strike. And they've said, Alan Joyce, last week, one breath congratulating the workforce and the next breath, saying that he wants increased flexibility in the workforce and he will not give um, and maintain um, decent standards for his workforce. He seems to want to have it both ways, but he seems to be training people for the worst way, and that is to have a strike. If, if there is a strike, though, and uh, Qantas managers are pressed into service so that they continue to provide service to their customers, um, what happens then? What's, what's the legal uh, ramifications of that, and uh, how does that affect your members? Well, Leon, I think this is, um, you know, what uh, you know, Qantas is uh, gearing up for, you know, what really happened um, leading into the Patrick's dispute, and that is that uh, training uh, people to have a confrontation with the workforce, letting out snippets um, to um, the media saying there might be a fight, but in actual fact training people up to it and saying to, the, to, their, to their employees that uh, the fight they will have Leon, just a part of the determination from the workforce is that we have in this country 40% of people working in this country are casual labour. And some people are casuals by choice, absolutely. But many, and 76%, say they want extra hours and job security. And what Qantas is doing, a profitable airline that can afford to turn around and maintain a decent Australian workforce, are saying that's not good enough for us. We want to be with the rest of, uh, we want, you know, higher, higher um, uh, casualisation and poor job security for Australian workers. And it's something that I don't think the Australian community, I don't believe the workforce is. And with the support of the workforce, I'm determined to represent that position mm. to Qantas. If you do strike, and uh, it always seems to happen at the uh, time of greatest travelling demand, if that happens, uh, if you do strike, there's always tremendous inconvenience caused to the travelling public who are then are asking themselves, so well, what's this got to do with me? It's not my fault. Why do I have to suffer? Isn't it a terribly negative PR exercise for you and your message if you do strike? Uh, Leon, you can say this, that um, you're, you're, you are right, because the, the travelling public, um, you know, rightly uh, should be proud of the Qantas airline. Um, and one of the fundamental issues that we're arguing with Qantas about is that quality performance, quality jobs. Um, the people, that, as Alan Joyce said, made this airline so fantastically profitable in the last six months. Um, should be recognised and I'm, I'm quite mindful that we would be giving as much notice um, as we um, possibly can to the travelling public because this is actually about also improving their quality of service. You know, we hear time and time again um, the passengers' views that Qantas is not as good as it was a decade ago, it wasn't as good as it was five years ago, let alone three years ago or even last year. The performance is decreasing and I don't think that's... Uh, that perception is uh, also reality that they've been sweating the Qantas brand to make sure their bonuses get up and that's a short term response to many executives who are only corporate adventurers that take their $10 million away with them and meanwhile the community travelling public and the staff that are uh, very proud to be wearing a Qantas uniform are left holding the bag <laughs> What was that phrase? Corporate adventurers? Yes <laughs> I've previously used the expression privateers and buccaneers, but uh, in another context and with other companies. But is that the same sort of thing that you're, you're getting at? Uh, I think you're right on the money there. It's, you know, the, uh, it is a sort of buccaneering approach. Um, you know, as you say, privateers, you know, travelling up next to the Australian community and passengers, um, and in this case the employees, and uh, you know, carrying, walking away with our community in this country's booty, which is a quality service with fair rates of pay, um, and proper standards, and you know, that's just not good enough in Australia. Thanks very much for your time today. Thanks very much, Leon. Thanks, to Tony Sheldon, the Secretary of the Transport Workers Union, and you can have your say, 13, 12, 69, whatever it is you'd like to talk about. Back with more very shortly.